So obviously modeling a bicycle chain like this is going to be tricky, yeah? I mean, it's complicated. It's made up of lots of little parts. Maybe you'd rather not do it. It's actually quite easy. Let's take that one and uh, hide it. And we're going to look at this chain link. So you can create a very simple chain link like this with a couple of basic shapes. Um, and what we want to do is to take that chain link and we want to we want to make multiples of it and wrap them along a path. So let's say let's create a path. If I create a 2D shape circle, um, let's do something like this. I might convert it to editable spline. Take a vertex, move it back like this. I might play around with it further. I might even tweak its shape. That'll do. That's the path for our chain. And that is our chain link here. Let's move it over. So to make the chain link fit, we need to make multiple copies of it. So if we drag, shift drag, we can make additional copies that will line up like that. I'm going to chance my arm and say that we're going to make 40 copies. That might be about right. I'm um, specifying copy rather than instance or reference. If I click OK, that gets me a chain like that. OK, 40 looks a little bit small for that size of chain, so I'm going to undo it. And I'm going to shift and drag. And this time I'll say, oh, 60 copies. 60 copies gets me that and that will be a bit better to wrap around. I might scale down my shape as well. So the chain should be more than twice the length of that space. I need to join all of these objects together. They're editable poly, so I click on attach and select chain link. And all of those chain links are attached. I now have one chain and the next task is to uh, attach that chain to the path. To do that we're going to use a path to form modifier. I'm going to click where it says none and click on the path we want to use. That's kind of gone a bit funny because if we look at that in the perspective view the path has gone on or the chain has gone on perpendicular. So we need to change the axis that we're working with. So try the x-axis in this case. And that's happened. Try the y-axis. Y-axis gets us what we want. Now I could have given myself more chain links or I can take the, um, the original path and I'm just going to scale that down. And no, that doesn't work. I could uh, have made an instance and scaled it down. Okay. Let's go back to the chain links so and we can see that they're wrapped around the path kind of badly. So if I select the chain links and I am going to go to the rotation and I'm going to rotate them 90 degrees and they wrap around kind of more like that. Now two alternatives, one is to go back and make a longer chain. The other I can do is to stretch the links that are on it. So I can stretch the links to about here. I'm kind of getting away with that. Uh, so just these last few, I'm just going to make a little change. I'm just going to click on the percent because I don't want to join them at that angle. Or maybe not. Maybe I'll do it like that. Um, percent back to zero and the stretch, there we go. So the stretch, I just need to fine tune the figure that I'm stretching it. So let's say 1.5, 1 1.6, 1 
five nine we'll try something like that nearly there a little tweak and we'll fix it that gets me a bicycle chain and I can have a look at that it's not so bad links are a little bit stretched but you get the idea we could have made a longer chain in doing it um, we can go back to the uh, path um, that we have for the chain which is the circle here I can go to vertex so I can move the verts on the path and the chain will adjust so as you can see that's another way of making the links line up um, so that is how to create a bicycle chain uh, we're going to be using a similar technique now next to create a bicycle tire.